a lot of you wouldn't believe me anyways. I'm sick and tired of hearing Mini Kelly is kind of overrated. YouTube is on the decline. The recession is not helping. Just because something is happening doesn't mean that you need to be so reactive. Celebrating other people's wins. Is that going to ever stop me? No, but does that change me? Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to another Q&A. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. In my last week's video, I shared my biggest biggest Ames haul video ever. I thought that there would be some questions surrounding that and in fact there were so we're gonna answer some of your questions and if you don't follow me on Instagram please do because that's where I collect your questions. By the way if you want to watch that video I'm gonna link it up here make sure to watch it after this Q&A. The first question is by Roy Melendez. Hi Roy, knowing what you know now if you were to restart your journey what five items would you buy first? You know what? After three years of shopping at Almez, I thought I would know this at the back of my hand. I guess it depends on what I have at that time, but let's just assume that everything being equal. I would say instead of costume jewelry, which is the first thing that I bought, I bought a fashion piece. Um, I would just go straight to their belts, especially the Kelly belt. Knowing how much I love my Kelly belt, and how well it goes with literally everything. It is, believe me guys, when I say it's the best belt ever. If you're gonna buy one belt and one belt only, buy the Hermes Kelly belt. These guys right here. In fact, I like it so much that I have three now and I'm trying to resist not buying another one just because I'm trying to match all the colors of my bags. Resisting really hard not to buy an a tube one just because my mini Lindy is in a tube, but I, I honestly think I have it all covered with these three colors. And that's how much I love this belt. I could not believe, or I cannot believe that I waited till my end of second year, third year to buy these belts, whereas I could have bought it right at the beginning and started enjoying them right from the beginning. I will say you don't need the pocket version, so you don't necessarily need to buy the, the more expensive version like I did, but I figured why not because this is an extra SLG and I don't normally buy SLG so much so for me this is sort of like an excuse to have more SLGs even though I don't technically need them but knowing me and how I style my outfits I like everything to look seamless and if I'm going for a specific look I want to have the option of the accessory because this also adds to the outfit believe it or not is not just functionality so that's why I went for all Kelly pocket belts uh, but either way I think for sure the first thing I would buy is probably a Kelly belt the second thing I would probably go and buy is um, their 90 centimeter silk scarf so having bought the larger scarf which is the cashmere 140. I enjoy the 90 centimeter more. I don't know for sure that everyone will feel the same way because I know some people prefer the bigger shawl. For me, I enjoy the 90 centimeter just because I, I don't know, the, the size is suitable for my body, the way I wear it as tops, as silk scarf, as you know, winter and summer. I can wear the same 90 centimeter scarf all year round. So for me, it's one of the most versatile item that I own from Elmez and they don't break the bank. They're f about $600 a pop. So it's really not that bad if you think about how much use you can get use out of them if you wear them though. However, I will say that when I first dabbled into Elmez, I was very reluctant to try their scarves because the first thought I have when I look at them is, ooh, they look they look a little bit for old lady. Like that's the first thought I ever have. I don't think that way anymore. They have different patterns all the time. They make new ones all the time. So when you find a pattern or a design that you simply love, in my case, when I love something, I buy multiples of like this one. I I have four of this one just because I love this. I love this one so much. I will say don't jump at it as if like you have to buy the designs that they have when you can't really fall in love with any of those just wait you know revisit their scarves often usually i know when they have a new scarf when it it shows up online like you know you if you shop the scarf section quite a bit 
and you see new ones pop up, you know that they will have a new one coming up to the store very soon. When they do, they come up with several colorways. So even if, let's say this design is your favorite, but you don't like pink, they have several colorways. So for sure, item number two is their silk scarves, and I buy a lot of them. Third item, that's tricky because I, I honestly don't know what else I am so, so, so passionate about. Maybe their rings. Yeah, that's the one I'm going for because at the time, I didn't have such a big collection of fine jewelry yet. So again, rewinding when I started, when I first started, um, I would probably go straight to shopping their fine jewelry right away. Whether it's a nice bracelet or a nice ring or a nice necklace, their fine jewelry is exquisite, especially because the designs that they do, you can't find it anywhere else, obviously. So they are unique in its own way, as long as it suits you, as long as you see yourself being able to rock them and wear them often. Cost wear is very important to me. So I feel like, yeah, fine jewelry is a strong, strong category. And it's also a very strong category to get a lot of pre-spending done in a short amount of time. Not that I recommend that necessarily. You don't have to spend a lot of money quickly in order to get a bag more quickly. It doesn't work that way. You still have to wait a certain amount of time. Just go by the natural flow of how, I don't know, like d discovering their stuff basically and just um, by what you need and love and would wear. So yeah, fine jewelry is number three, and then shoes. Yeah, I like their shoes. I wouldn't say that all their shoes are comfortable, if even uh, some of them are super uncomfortable, but I will say so far the sheep sandals have been great. I always love the idea of wearing dad sandals, but I can't do the whole Velcro thing on my feet, so I love the slip and go. So sheep sandals have been wonderful for me. Although the only caveat is I do have to tape the underside of where it scuffs me. So aside from that, I'm okay with the sandals. They actually look great and they're very, um, you know, one question that I got from my video is, are they timeless? Are, is that sandals just gonna be a phase and it's no longer gonna be in fashion? The thing is, I think dad sandals are here to stay. And even if they're not, let's just say one year dad sandals are not, it's always gonna be a summer every year, right? Like it's always gonna get hot enough where you, you can't wear your other shoes. Even loafers are too hot. So sandals are the way to go. And I'm not always about dinky sandals. I like to be able to walk a lot and feel like it's still relatively comfortable. I might as well go ahead and show you what sandals I'm talking about and it's this one. It's very popular. Uh, these are still brand new. I haven't worn them yet but I will. I'm about to wear all my sandals very quickly because it's getting very hot lately. And so the sheep sandals, these are called sheep, have this sort of like um, mold on them enough to make it comfortable for long wear the only place that i don't like that i don't love is right here because the stitching and somehow with the leather being still stiff when it's new it's very abrasive on dry skin i have very very dry skin so i just tape it up with some microfiber stickers and i'm all good and the last one number five oh that's a tough one. It's sort of a category of item. I think ready to wear. Hear me out. I know ready to wear is going to be a hard one for most people to sort of absorb and think, oh my gosh, I'm not about to spend thousands of dollars on a t-shirt. You don't have to, but I'm just saying ready to wear in general, if you're after a bag, for example, in general, it's a very favorable category to spend in just, you know, for your profile. Because you have a goal, right? You want a bag, and if you're not willing to go the consignment route, then you have to buy stuff at the store. And if you're going to wear those clothes anyway, then why not spend on them? You can find little gems here and there between different seasons. And so it's not a hard one item. It's just a category of items. Um, because I do enjoy their ready-to-wear a lot, especially because they, they really excel at the... Um, 
the wolves and the knits. They drew wolves very, very well and very, very stylish. Um, they're very elegant, very good quality. If you live in a, a little bit of a colder climate, you can get a lot of wear out of them. So I, I really like their ready to wear a lot. Um, it's just a matter of finding the right piece for you because a lot of times they can be a bit more simple. But that's a great question, Roy. And I think I would ask you the same thing. <laughs> I've been wondering after shopping at Hermes, your store in Sydney for so long. Um, yeah, what would you buy your first five items? I'm sure it's different for a guy versus a girl. The next question is by It's Judicious. What do you do full time? So I've answered this question more than once. In fact, I think I've answered it in my last two Q and A's. So I'm gonna encourage you to watch my last two Q and A's where I discuss my profession. But I will say, however, that I would love to do YouTube full time. I'm not sure how I'll manage that, but it's sort of something I would like to do. Um, but it's challenging. I found a good rhythm for myself now, like once a week is a good uploading schedule for me plus the live stream so it's basically twice a week of me showing up on here on this platform and i think that's enough i personally don't want to oversaturate myself on the platform i don't know if you guys feel the same way if you feel like nope amy it's good just stay the same way just do the same type of content you do same frequency i'm good with that <laughs> i don't think i'll try to do more uh, but unless you feel differently what kind of direction and what kind of different content would i add to and would i do it at a different frequency i guess that's that's my own sort of like not sure what i should do dilemma type of thing um but i would love your feedback Days gracia if you already had a mini kelly what would your special order be? That is a great question. I don't know. I definitely know what I want immediately because it's always better to just, you know, baby steps at everything you do in life. I apologize already ahead of time for being so philosophical sometimes, but that's how I feel. If I have my eyes and my head and my goals so far ahead in the future, I, I would only get disappointment when I don't reach it. Um, fast enough or if I don't reach it at all like those are just things that I you know I, I, I just pace myself achieving one thing at a time is definitely doable and it feels more achievable when you do achieve it it's like euphoria it's like something that you can something that you can be proud of and you make a new goal and I love that kind of progress because it doesn't feel like you're always stuck at at being dissatisfied at everything that you do because you're not there yet so I haven't really thought about what's gonna be after the mini Kelly but if I'm just gonna like I don't know make up something right now I honestly think that I will go for another Kelly or Birkin I don't know but either way it's either gonna be a Kelly 25 Cellier or another Birkin 25 Cellier not retourné. Another Birkin this size but the cellier construction. Just because I really like that structure and I really like how um I really like how the very stiff and very proper prim and proper look of the Birkin looks in a lighter color. So probably something in a lighter color obviously cuz no more black for sure. Um Cellier, still the same size. I would keep it everything the same size probably for myself. Very light gray, like beton. Actually, there is a blue color that I love and it's a very light blue called Bleu Brume. That one in, oh wow, yeah, that one, that one. That one in a Birkin 25 Cellier, which is, isn't that the exact bag that, I think it's the exact bag that um, Mel and Melbourne has. Pretty sure it is the exact one I'm forgetting now. That one would be wonderful in um, in that color for the Birkin Silly. Equally wonderful for the Kelly. But honestly, with the Kelly, I I think 
oh, a soft off-white color would be amazing for sure. Hirata style, favorite red lipstick. Oh yes, my favorite red lipstick is the one that I wear all the time and it's always linked in the description below. It's actually this one, um, which is unfortunately a limited edition, but they still do have stock, which is why I link it all the time in the, um, in the description. They have stock at Selfridges. And this color, this color for whatever reason, which I received as a gift, initially, and this is also a, another gift, is wonderful on me. And in fact, my first bullet, which I'm still using, I'm already past the Hermes logo, which is why I was so afraid of running out. So I'm so glad that I have a new bullet. But this color is wonderful on me. I'm not wearing it currently. I actually had this lipstick underneath, but I ate. And so I just went ahead and put my favorite lip oil, which is also from Hermes. So these two colors, if you look at it, they're basically the same color, but just in a lip oil form. And this is the lipstick form. This one does have a slight, very slight sort of like that satiny shimmer when it's on your lips. Uh, on the bullet, you can't see it. It's very funny. But once you start using it, this is a brand new one, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I love this color so much, but I would say if I couldn't buy this one, I guess the closest one would be Rouge Kazak, but that one is more on the blue undertone than this one. This one definitely has more of that orange, almost neon, neon orange red kind of tone, which is so beautiful. I decided to buy a new concealer recently and I decided to go with the Dior Forever um, concealer. Um, anyway, it's, it's super popular. And I was matched with the color 1W. And apparently the neutral tone is still a bit too rosy for my skin tone because I do have that kind of olivey green undertone, even though I'm very fair because I'm color 1. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I just found out that. Anyway, it's hard to know when you don't have a point of reference and because I don't really shop for makeup that often. But I think that is why um, the, the sort of like apricot shape uh, or anything that has a bit of an orange, like just a slight, it's very hard to tell, but it's just a very slight orange undertone really suits me a lot. I, I just found that out. Joe overjoyed. What would your ideal Mini Kelly 2 specs be? We know it's coming up. Oh my goodness, I really hope so. I kind of want to do a red. On the other hand, if I was to get offered a Mini Kelly in black, in white, in gray, I would be happy with just Epsom, which is so unoriginal. It's just so simple. Um, Chev is a beautiful leather. I've had the experience to review a Chev leather bag, so in the mini kelly so i love chef as well otherwise in the exotics if it was like a black alligator with gold hardware or like perma brass or rose gold like any of those shades uh with black or i'm all over the place i honestly just want one it's not that i'm not being picky i am gonna be picky but i think Whatever is meant to be is meant to be. That's what I'm trying to say. I probably will end up needing a lot of combinations, which I'm really scared of because I think that's how much I love that bag. I honestly can have one in black, one in white, one in red, and maybe one in exotic. Like that's kind of crazy, isn't it though? Which is why I'm kind of <laughs> not trying to get ahead of myself. Uh, and it's really hard for me to choose just one combo. It's, let me delve into this a little bit more. I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing this like Mini Kelly is kind of overrated type of thing. The idea of me choosing, for example, the most crazy combination such as an exotic, right? It's not going to be as wearable for everyday use, even though I will probably wear it as often as I could. But ideally speaking, practically speaking, it's not going to be as I... It's not going to be as easy to wear it every day. So I don't really know if I want that as my ideal 
or first mini Kelly, which is why I can't even say that that's my ideal combo, although it's a really nice combo I would love to have. So probably the most ideal, to be practically speaking, is just another black mini Kelly with gold hardware or rose gold hardware. Both are fine. You know what I mean? Like it's, it comes down to something so easy and practical, which that's why I said I would never say no to a black mini Kelly, another black bag, I know, which is insane because I want to experience the other colors. So it will be just whatever is presented to me if I'm even lucky enough to get presented one option like that. And I'll take it as long as I like it. As long as I don't dislike it, that's that's where I draw the line. Um, yeah. I hope that makes sense. Naida XOX, how hard is the Hermes Mini Huli to get? Um, I honestly don't know, but I know for a fact that any bags are hard to get nowadays. I think if it was pre-pandemic, uh, it would have been a lot easier to get these non-quarter bags. Now that it's 2023, everyone's into luxury, quite luxury, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, Everything is hard to get. Everything, including non quarter bags. And depending on your locale, um, I know for a fact that in Vancouver, it's hard to get anything. It's hard to get the most basic non quarter bags as well. I think timing and just being in the right place at the right time is also crucial. Like, basically, you have to be kind of lucky as well because uh, technically, with non quarter bags, you in the past could walk in and ask like, oh, I'm interested in this bag, do you happen to have it? And if they have it, they might offer it to you. Nowadays, they might all be reserved for clients because even clients can't get their hands on regular non quota bags these days. Friend Love Lux, why do you love the Chanel rubber boots so much? Because they're so comfortable. And honestly, I don't know about you, but I've tried so many types of rain boots just because I live in a city that rains a lot and none of them are as cute as the Chanel ones. It's just as simple as that. The Chanel ones will look good no matter what outfit you put together, which is so strange. Like, I don't know a rain boot that is that versatile. Whether you wear pants, no pants, leggings, jeans, as long as you're able to tuck it in, which I find them generous enough to tuck in the boots, I don't have particularly big calves. I don't have small calves, but I don't have big, big calves. So I just have regular, regular calves. Um, I find them to be so good looking, so easy to style and so forgiving. And somehow, even though they are very big and clunky looking, they still can manage to make me look like I have legs for days. That's why I love them. They are so nice and they are so comfortable. Like comfort is number one for sure. And the fact that they look nice no matter how I style them is like cherry on top. From Kat L, a wet bag will you go after your mini Kelly? Oh my gosh, you guys are all asking the same questions. I don't know. I think the next bag I need to get is the Constance 18. Chances are, with my luck, I'm just gonna end up with a black anyway, so... <laughs> again, all the colors, all the neutrals. But again, there's this dilemma. Do I go after this bag as my quota bag in my local city, or do I try to get it while I travel out of town, right? Because do I really want to spend quota pre-spend money on this bag for an entire year, right? That's that's where I'm kind of struggling because for us, the Constance is still a quota bag. It's still a full year wait. So uh, I have to think about that, whether I should get it here or not. Um, but I would like to get a Constance for sure as a next bag regardless. Um, but if I'm not going to try here locally, i probably go for another Kelly. Yeah, I, I, okay. If it's not a Constance, I would probably go for another Kelly 25, um, just because I want a light color. I love the black, I love it to death, but I want to be able to wear a regular size Kelly 
also in the summertime. Lizzie C, do you ever visit Toronto? Oh, yes. Um, so Lizzie, I know you're from Montreal, so I used to live there and I lived most of my life there uh, until I moved here. So when I was in Montreal, I would, you know, we would do road trips to Toronto. It's a five, six hour drive from, from Montreal. So we would do regular yearly road trips to Toronto. So yes, I, I do visit. I, I haven't been back since, I guess in the past decade, I haven't been back to Toronto. I don't think I have. No, I haven't. Not to mostly what items do you buy to hit for quota for quota bag and do you sell some of the items? Um no, I don't really sell my pre-spend items because um in case you guys are not aware, pre-spend items are just items that you know, if if a normal person didn't have to buy it to get a bag, they wouldn't buy it. Like you know what I mean? Like a lot of these things, scarves, everything, like I probably would buy half of the amount of stuff that I would buy if I didn't have to pre-spend. On the other hand, when I say that I bought it just because I like it, a lot of you wouldn't believe me anyway. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, I just buy what I have to buy in order to reach my goal. And at the same time, I also buy them because I like it. I like it enough to buy it and it helps me reach a goal, so why not? But in terms of reselling those items, I don't because the sad news about these things is that most people wouldn't buy them unless they have to and so it's very hard to sell them. Nobody wants them probably unless it's a very popular item. For a little while, these shoes this style of shoes was very hard to come by. So a lot of people were able to resell these at a premium or at least recuperate their money. I've never resold mine just because I love them. So if I resold it, I wouldn't be able to wear. I did let go of a couple of my Hermes items just because they didn't work out. There was one pair of shoes. I mentioned it many, many times already. The platform sandals, the EZ30, they didn't work for me. So. I consigned them and you guys know that when you consign you actually lose money because no consignment stores are, are gonna pay you a, a premium for selling things that nobody wants right so um, no I don't resell my items because it makes no sense to lose money constantly mostly what items you tend to buy to hit quota just buy what you love truly however I can tell you that the categories that are the most helpful are fine jewelry ready to wear and watches those three if you just keep buying things from these categories you're gonna hit your quota pre-spend pretty fast first of all and it's gonna look so good on your profile and they're gonna love you and they're gonna want to offer you bags is this what i do no i can't live with just buying things like watches and fine jewelry and ready to wear all the time that would be so boring and that would be a lot of money <laughs> like a lot of money but i don't need all those things right like i like a variety of things and i like to buy things that i actually use and love so i like to dabble a little bit on everything i like shoes i like scarves i like belts um i like ready to wear i like fine jewelry i buy everything they're always out of stock as well so you know sometimes you just can buy what you can buy you should only buy things that you actually love um, because what's the point otherwise and trust the process because at the end of the day it's not about the amount that you buy it's not about how much you buy it's not about what you buy it's about all of those things plus the fact that you have to love the brand and um, it has to come through genuinely Miles and Sid would you recommend buying an Hermes watch does it contribute to the age journey yes yes definitely so Hermes watches are a favorite of the top three categories that I just mentioned. They love it when you spend money on those categories. However, I will say watches for me personally, one is more than enough because I don't even wear them. I wear my Apple watch more often than I wear a regular watch. So I do have one, but I'm probably not going to buy a second one unless they did something crazy and like, you know, gotta have it type of scenario. But I doubt it just because I I wear Apple Watch most of the time and in, in fact, if I don't even have to wear the Apple Watch, I wouldn't wear a watch. 
that's how little I wear watches. I'd rather buy more bracelets and have a stack of bracelets than to get another watch, if that makes sense. But it does help a lot. Judy Cassidy, what are your thoughts on the decline of luxury YouTube? Interesting. Do you mean decline in like luxury YouTube videos or just in general like the fact that it feels like most people are not into luxury on YouTube? Like people are not really watching the content because I definitely feel that. I feel like my videos are being watched less and less and less. Even to the point where my evergreen videos such as the ones where I put in, I pour in a lot of time and effort to review and to show and to talk about a lot of the details. Uh, those are not doing so well either, but they're evergreen, so hopefully it's just a cycle. I definitely think that there is a lot of factors behind the reason why luxury on YouTube is on the decline. First of all, the recession is not helping. And recession is global, right? It, it affects everyone, it affects you and me. How I'm going about my collection is changing as well. Uh, now, in terms of how I feel about it on YouTube, um, it's sad in a way that, um, you know, it used to be so much more fun. It used to be more about celebrating other people's wins versus now it feels like you're constantly being judged just because you're sharing on this platform uh, on things that you bought and, and just trying to you know, tell people that, hey, I got something good, you should check it out yourself as well. Like, instead of being celebrated, I feel like people are a lot more judgmental and bitter about the sharing just because it happens to conflict with the, the idea of recession, which is a very negative and very unfortunate um, cyclical event. It's how people react to it that I find um, very unfortunate because just because something is happening doesn't mean that you need to be so reactive and be so negative about it. Yes, it's understandable, we're all humans, but at the same time, uh, is it helping though? No, I think it sucks, that's how I feel. And also, um, as a content creator myself, as someone who's doing the sharing and having to be very careful at how I share, at being having to be mindful and tread the waters so delicately. Um, it's been very stressful for me lately, um, to say the least, on how much I share, how often I share, when I share, it, like that type of thing. You can never please everybody. Is that gonna ever stop me? No, but does that change me? Yes. Will I keep doing it? Yes, but I, I will do it slightly differently and I I do avoid certain subjects, I do avoid oversharing, and that is unfortunate because I want to be helpful, but I can't because I have to protect myself as well. So yeah, it's going to alter my behavior, but that is as a reaction of your guys' behavior. I don't mean you like as in you, but just in general, a lot of the negativity out there. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels this way. <laughs> I don't know, lately there's been also a lot of videos about YouTubers quitting. <laughs> I don't really know what's all that about because I don't really watch them, but at the same time, um, I can guess what's going on. I also try to avoid a lot of negative topics or negative videos in general, and even just news, not just on YouTube. In general, I don't watch the news just because I don't want everyone's problems to become my problem, so I just don't want to know and I don't care to know because I have enough of my own business to mind. However long this decline is happening, I'm sure it'll hit rock bottom at one point and hopefully at that point it'll start going up because it cannot go anywhere else but up anyway and that's why I'm still around, which is why I still do what I do. I just keep posting and I just keep doing what I do until there's a, 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 an upturn, I was gonna say downturn, another upturn where things are gonna look a little bit brighter, people are gonna go back to being more joyful and just, you know, I don't mean joyful as in like you have to be happy all the time. Yes, things do suck sometimes. Maybe people can start maybe either minding their own business only and if you have nothing good to say, don't say it type of 
type of thing like just mind your own business and of course if you have good things to say then yeah share the joy and be happy for others as well i think people that are able to do that also are the happier people because they're able to celebrate others not just themselves um so it's it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that are you guys actually really enjoying a lot of the reactions and like the you know you want more discussions on these like hot topics quiet luxury etc etc which honestly i don't even know why we have to talk about it i don't care that's my stance but if that's what you guys want to know maybe that's what i need to do that's the thing i i maybe my not caring is not good enough and i want to know anyway thank you so much for your questions i hope you guys enjoyed this don't forget to follow me on instagram subscribe to this channel i also do a weekly live stream and you can also join my membership where you get even more exclusive behind the scenes and more intimate content that um i don't post here on the public channel but anyways thank you so much i'll talk to you guys in the comment section bye